Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to another wonderful episode of Behind the Pink Wall. My name is Jasmine Jones. I'm co-founder and COO of Cherry Blossom Intimates, an intimates boutique designed with women in mind. And our main focus is catering to breast cancer survivors, making sure they have a fabulous post mastectomy shopping experience. But on this episode of Behind the Pink Wall, we actually get to hear from Mr. Vince Smith about the caregiver's perspective and the male caregiver's perspective for breast cancer. Hi, Mr. Mm -hmm. Vince, how are you? I guess I'm it's nice. okay to call you Vince? Yeah, that's right, okay. yes. Yeah, Vince, um, so that's right. tell me a little bit about your wife and okay. the kind of person she is. Okay, um, my wife is very strong. My wife is very, um, focused and I am very surprised at the way that she handled her diagnosis. Um, in the very beginning um, she didn't cry um, from what I saw. She decided that you know this was just something that she needed to work through and this was another stage in her life that we were going to walk and go through. Um, so currently she refers to that as her journey um, she was originally diagnosed in 2010. Um, we had been married in 2008. And by the time um, she was diagnosed within a month, because her, her cancer was aggressive, um, they went into immediate operation to remove it. Um, she was in, she was, uh, I'm sorry, she was in uh, the hospital or, or in surgery for 14 hours. Oh wow. Okay, and I spent all that time watching other planes come in and other things happening, but I was in that hospital the entire time she was under the under the knife. Mm -hmm. um, she then came out and spent three days in ICU, and then um, they put her in a regular room, and on that day, that was our anniversary. Wow. And so what I did is I, I said, well, since we can't really celebrate, I'm going to bring our wedding glasses and of course I couldn't bring the, the real bubbly so I got some apple cider and uh, we toasted and celebrated our anniversary there in the hospital room. Now that was our second anniversary. Um, since Your second then, anniversary? Yeah, the second anniversary. Wow. Yeah, we, newlyweds. Yeah, newlyweds. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I first found out, or when we first found out, we were kind of silent for a while. Um, and then there was a time that when I had my quiet moments, I was actually angry because I was like, how, how is this happening? Um, we're just starting out. I've been waiting for this woman all my life. And now that we're together, how, how are we supposed to uh, go down this path? And then I realized that that's what it was. It was just as she said, it was, it was something that we needed to work past because unfortunately cancer is not the be-all get-all I mean it is very devastating it is very but there are other ways people are leaving the earth and so getting that focus in my mind helped me to, to better understand um, how to how to navigate our situation um, she used to tell me that I wasn't a great communicator Oh, really? Yeah. Never uh, heard that before. Yeah. Men are great communicators. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand what she meant by that. Yeah. Because I said, we're talking about this. What she meant was is that I needed to have a better understanding of the cancer that she had. I needed to be able to share what I was feeling, um, good and bad. Um, there are some things that I even say that I don't, I don't even know if I remember saying it to her. But I realized that I have to put it out there. I realized that um, to be a better caregiver means one, being able to share more of yourself. Two, being able to understand um, the situation and adjusting to it. Um, I'll tell you this funny story. <laughs> uh, my wife had just uh, gotten through her first, ver the, her first, uh, first version of the uh, therapy and during that, they're working on uh, killing the cells, and mm -hmm. that's what they're looking for, to kill the cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Well, afterwards, she would start doing things like uh, we sat, we'd sit down to dinner and we'd pray over our food. Well, this particular evening, before I could even lift my fork, she said, are we going to pray over our food? 
And I kind of looked around and was like, am I being punked? Is there something? But I realized that um, she just wasn't remembering. And so I had to change my thought because my thought was that she was joking with me. And, I, and unfortunately, I would get angry because I'm thinking, well, why are you joking with me yeah, like that? Yeah, like stop playing. Yeah, like stop thing. playing because right, right. she is a jokester too. See, okay. that's what I mean. It's kind of hard because it's like, okay. Um, but over time, I've realized that, no, that's, that's all a part of what they refer to now as chemo brain. And so she's asked me in the past to tell her when it happens. Um, I've opted to tell her at some points. <laughs> I know I'm saying this. Uh, I, often, I, I opted to tell her at different junctures. And basically, if we have to, I'll pray over the food again. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not that biggie. Maybe we do need to pray a second time over this food. <laughs> Maybe she knows something you don't know. <laughs> Exactly. So I've learned that, over, that, that through life, um, this cancer journey that she calls, and, and I again refer to it as our venture, that it is very important um, as that supporter to be there as much as you can. And I was very blessed. Um, I was a government contractor at the time, and they allowed me to the first time a contractor was able to work remotely and they set me up to totally do that and I am beyond um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, feeling blessed that they did that for us uh, which allowed me to be able to be at every um, every surgery um, every treatment um, during the uh, and any of the visits. Anytime mm -hmm. she was under the knife, anytime they talked about whatever they were gonna do next, I was allowed to be there. Good. And I think that helps. So being, guys- I, Being at all the appointments, yeah, getting at, remote well, work. Well, because you got, the, the reasoning for, for behind that is is that one, a woman should really never go to that meeting by herself, okay? And, and being that supporter, that's a part of it. I'm just another pair of ears. So when she says, oh, but the doctor said A, B, C, D, and I'm like, no, the doctor said A, Z, C, D, then, you know, we may go back and forth about it, but at least she has the input from me because I heard it differently. Okay. Remember, you're going to hear it differently because you're going through it. Right. How I'm going through it or listening, I'm going to hear it a total different way. Right. And so uh, we actually began to record we started to record it so that way she would have a history and anytime she needed to go back, she could do that. That's clever, would so, you recommend that? Yeah, I would definitely recommend that. Okay. Especially if there are times where you're just going, if they're, they're going on their own, um, as far as the, the, the patient, I would make sure that that's, that happens. If you go on your own and all you have to do is let the doctor know that you're just recording this for history. Um, but yeah, I would truly recommend. Mm. That's one of the first. That's one of the first lines is make sure you're not going by yourself, because it's hard for you to really hear what's being said when that journey is now affecting your life. Mm. Um, so it really makes it hard to 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 actually hear what that doctor is saying. Right. And I don't mean just the overall. I mean when they're talking to you about the process. Um, we found that a lot of a, a, a lot of patients don't know what type of cancer they have, mm. and so we always say, ask the questions. And if you don't if you don't think you're getting the right answers, go to someone else. So tell me how she found out that she was diagnosed. Well, ironically, <laughs> we were on vacation, huh. and she did a self exam, and she told me, you know, um, I felt something. And I was like, uh, that's, what you, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, and she had just had um, her mammogram uh, in October, and this was April of mm. 2010. Wow. And so they didn't see anything then. So between 2010, or that, that October when she had it done, and in April, in April wow. it came up. Wow. And so she was, uh, they referred to it as a stage two, and she was triple negative. Mm -hmm. Triple negative means they don't know where it came from, and they're not sure what's causing it. Well, that brought about a entire life change. 
because it meant, well, we're not sure where it came from. So you change the types of food that you eat. You change the uh, type of deodorant that you may wear, all of those types of things. Um, because they're saying some of these things, uh, I think there was even something about the underwire in your bra mm -hmm. is, can cause those types of issues mm -hmm. or concerns. Hi, I'm Dr. Regina Hampton. I'm the CEO and co-owner of Cherry Blossom Intimates, but I'm also the medical director and a breast surgeon at Doctors Community Hospital. Today I want to talk about some myths as far as mammograms. So everyone has these myths that just keep running rampant through the community about mammograms. So first, mammograms are safe. We actually save many lives using mammograms. The second one is that deodorants cause breast cancer. The only reason why deodorants are important is because when you're getting your mammogram on that day, we don't want the metals that are often found in deodorants to confuse our radiologists when they're reading our mammogram. So it's important that we get our yearly mammograms. And if you want more information like this, you can come see us at Cherry Blossom Intimates where we're involved with uh, bra fittings and appropriate support, but also with breast education. Thank you. Now, we know there are a lot of myths out there when it comes to bras. Let's tackle the most common one, wires in bras. So many people think that wires in bras cause breast cancer. I'm here to tell you, as a breast surgeon, that is absolutely not true. One of the problems with wires is that most of us are in the wrong size wire. We don't realize that as our body size increases, we should increase our bra size as well. So, bras with wires are safe, uh, and they are meant to be comfortable and to help give you support and uplift. Come in to Cherry Blossom Intimates located in Prince George's County, and we will help to solve that problem for you. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the recommendation is for men to be better supporters is to understand what she's going through as best you can. Do not try to be a coach. Do not say, oh, well, you know, when somebody falls, you tell them to get up and brush it off. <laughs> that's not the way to, to be that supporter. Right. And it's very hard not to do because that's what we are. We are fixers. Right. You see a problem and you want to fix it. Yes. Because and even I was like that. I was like, I, how am I going to fix this problem? Right. But right. I can't. Mm. This is a journey that we just have to go through, and all I can do is stand back and, and guide or help where I can. And so it meant many days of bringing water, making sure that she was totally covered, whatever needed to be done that day. And I just, at some points, everybody started asking, well, when do you do for yourself? And I said, oh, I take my time. <laughs> okay. Tell me about this time that you yeah, say. Yeah, well, you know, there's... There's times that, um, like, if I found I had some free time, I may pop off to a movie, or I would just go sit in the park. Solo. Yeah, just solo. Yeah. yeah, if I had that moment, and that's all I needed. I just needed that moment to just, just kind of take in life and understand that there's a bigger picture. And as a part of that bigger picture, it just means that these are things that we deal with on a daily. Um, all of us deal with it differently. You know, um, I've heard that some, some children kind of step away. They're not exactly sure what to do. It's their mom. I'm really worried about you. But understand this. She's also as worried about you. Mm. Okay? And they're worried about what you're going through. And then that's why we get some that decide not to tell anybody. I'm not sure if that's the greatest of things. Because mm. at the end of the day, um, because you never shared it, then it makes it very hard for them to understand what's ultimately going on. Was your wife vocal about her process? Um, yes, she was. Okay. Yeah, she, she made sure of that. And I can, and I can say that um, everybody kind of handled it differently. Okay. You know, um, my son started wearing shirts with, you know, the... Pink ribbons the, the, on Well, it, he would do the pink ribbons. Even I started wearing pink more often than I ever have in my life. <laughs> um but the the biggest thing was he would he you know they have this uh, symbol with the finger and the fu cancer oh yeah and so he would walk around with that as okay. a part of his way yeah, yeah. of trying to um, but everybody kind of does it different right. it's a it's a tough thing so one of the things that we're trying to do with the men's group is um, get us to be able to come together and have those free moments right how are men about getting together communicating. 
uh, well, the first phase is we're, we're kind of hard about it. Okay. Um, honestly, we, even I, in the beginning was like, because she said it, you, I think you need to talk with someone. And when she first said it to me, I remember I, I sat there and I said, I, I, I don't know that I really need to talk with anybody. I think I, think I have this handled. And over time, I realized that I really didn't have it handled. And what I mean by that is, again, with the approach of us fixing it, once I started hanging around and I was in, in the groups, I realized two things. One was is that she's a part of this forever. The second was that we are a part of this forever. Mm. Because that's the love of my life. That's my wife. And so therefore it means we're going we're gonna to go down this path. And as we go down this path, it's continual. Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with friends. With, with, with friends. Um, she just recently lost her mom, which is very tough. Um, three years ago, I lost mine. But mm -hmm. it wasn't a cancer. It was just normal. And that's what I mean. Right. It doesn't have to be that. Right. But in the fight, and she calls it her fight. She's a warrior. She's a cancer warrior. Not survivor. She's a warrior. Yeah, she's a warrior. That's nice. Yeah. I like yeah, that. She is not a survivor. She is a warrior. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is a road. I watched my wife um, go on her journey. And within that journey, I kind of watch, you know, where you watch her grow older. You know, we did the hair thing. She was worried about that. So I pulled out my razor and, okay, let's do this. Wow. And she was like, yep, it's, it's time. Wow. And so we went from those moments and then I'll share this one little secret I don't know if she really wants me to but <laughs> there was a time she had gotten in the shower and she was like where's my shower cap and I was like what do you need a shower cap for <laughs> you don't you... Yeah. and she was like you know you're right and she jumped in there and she <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was really funny because the idea was okay well you don't you know you don't you, you can do and for a long time she was very pleased that all she had to do was get in there and 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 run some water across and she was off and on her way wow in fact we used to debate about you know hair um and we've also dealt with unfortunately those um, women that have decided, well, I don't want to go through the procedure. And I'm sorry. I'm a, a total advocate of if it's necessary, please do it. So are we. If it's necessary, please do what your doctor okay. says. Yeah, yes. and if you, do what your doctor and if you says need the second time. doctor, right. get a second doctor. Or a third. Or a third. But follow their orders. But follow their orders. Right, right. Because we lost a, a, a friend that decided, well, we've had two, two versions. The first was the husband decided that he didn't want her to have the surgery. The second and was... And she passed. And she passed. And the second was that she decided that she didn't want to because her breast was very important to her. And I'm here to say women are more than their breasts. Yes. Okay? You're more than your hair. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I love you, I love you without those things. And if we have to, then we just adjust to whatever that may be. Um, I, I'll digress just for a second. When I was younger, we used to have conversations about, well, what would you do if? You know, here it is, we're married. What would you do if you lost a limb? What would you do if this happened? And some of us would say, well, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it because that's something that's never going to happen. Right. And other times we were like, well, you know, I would still be there. Because that's the person I chose. Mm -hmm. That's the person that, I, like I said, I've, I waited for my wife a long time. And once I found her, for this to happen, that's what I got angry about at first. But then I realized, this is all life. And life is a wonderful thing, yeah. even with having to deal with this right. disease. Right. Because you found love, yeah. too. Yeah. You found love. Yeah. How did you meet? <laughs> We actually um, we actually met online. Nice. Yeah, there were there were groups um, um, that used to get together, and one of the things that happened was um, they used to do these meet and greets, and I happened to go to one, and I saw her. But they were doing a Sadie Hawkins dance night, and that means if she asks you, you have to dance. Well, every time I went to head toward her, someone else was dancing, <laughs> and so that night. I had to wait a year. I no waited a full way. year before I ran back into her again. Wow. Yeah. But you knew. You knew. I, oh, yeah. Her. I kind of I knew. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, I kind of knew. And um, ironically, one of our, our oldest grandchild knew too, because at the time she was three years old. Oh. And she was sitting in the back of the car and she just got to laughing. <laughs> you know, grandma said one day she's going to marry you. Ah, ha, ha, I, I can't hold it. And she, <laughs> and grandma what? was like, huh? <laughs> what did you say? And sure enough. Oh, you know, wow. Yeah, yeah, and she's 18 now. So, oh, wow. yeah, that, that kind of, yeah, it's an amazing, it's been an amazing life. We've been very blessed. Um, I can say that the, the cancer has now become a full part of our lives. Okay. But we continue to live our life. Good. And so I support anything that she likes to do. She uh, loves to do embroidery. So she has the machine of life to do embroidery. Mm -hmm. um, she went to an event one day and she came back home and she said, they have this machine. And my first thought was, get it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. get it. And, and like I said, we've been blessed enough to do that. Um, but the, the big one is, is that as a part of this too, we have offered ourselves up to um, supporting any of the groups. So I do, I do video work. I do um, tax work now. Uh, I work with my dad. I was a physical security specialist for 36 years. Wow. I was on the team that designed the Martin Luther King Memorial. I worked for the Smithsonian. I worked for um, uh, the uh, uh, Social Security Administration. Um, I did the Olympics in 96 down in Atlanta. Wow. I was a part of the World Cup in 94. Wow. So I've had a very blessed life. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I waited for a very long time for her. And though we go through our ups and downs, we still realize that, you know, this is just a part of our life. Right. And right. that's where we kind of left it. Um, like I said, this, this past Saturday, we did get some bad news and that was, that was a little rough. Um, and when it was Not my for her, but for her friend. For her friend, yeah. Right. And when it was time for us to talk, I kind of broke down because for me, it serves as that, that reminder. Yes. And unfortunately, we don't always like that reminder that tells us that we are uh, human mm -hmm. and that there may be that day that you just don't wake up. Right, right. And it's a, it's a tough one to fathom, but I also say, Make sure you have things in place. Right. Make sure everyone has an understanding of what it is you want to have happen. Did you and your wife talk about this? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, that was a hard conversation, too, because, you know, we really, because we were just starting out, we really didn't have um, a lot of those things in place. But now I have to recommend, you know, now that we've, um, uh, more time has gone by, we're becoming more seasoned. Um, the recommendation is, yeah, yeah, and even the young, because and it just you'd happens. recommend that to couple caregivers yeah. as well to have that conversation. Yeah, you got to have that, even yes. if it's difficult. Even if it's difficult, right. because the 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 part of that support is also that you may have to make that decision, right. and that decision is going to be based on what you two have talked about. And it could be 50, 60, 70 years from now. Yes. But at least it's written exactly. down. Exactly, but at least it's written down. And it's the way she wants and we it to are be. A, um, a, we are a, a society of passwords. And so what I tell people is, you can give her that one password that would open the, the, the whole box, okay? Um, and you can have your own, but you need to do that. You need, uh -huh. to, you need to have a way of being able to share that, I love that. once that happens. I and love so that. that way you have that one password that will just open the door to everything that you, you have. Because we got bank accounts, credit accounts, That's a great you know, all of these different things that if something were to happen, she's now responsible to, right. to at least monitor it and, and, and put it in its place. Even if you guys decide while you're living to not share that password final thing or Correct. if yes. you decide to keep it private you can put it inside of a lockbox keep it safe yes and give her the code for yep. emergency for that emergency. break the yes. glass in case of break emergency the glass. Exactly but right. the rest yeah. anything else you ever need would open up that yes. makes perfect sense yeah i love that yeah i'm i was actually uh and i'm gonna go ahead and say this but i was actually thinking of a way um for one of these apps to actually be able to notify people when things happen 
because as a family, you don't really think about it. Right. But it would be nice. That would be nice. You know what I mean? To that that there's some ability yeah, to so you're not have sitting that on happen. the phone calling yeah. everybody. Because that's hard. And, I'm, oh. and I went through it with my mom. I know she went through it with hers. That's a million and, dollar uh, idea. You better yeah, get on that. Yeah, yeah I need to. <laughs> yes, yes, I definitely need to do that. That's a great idea. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, 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 it has been quite the road. It has been quite the blessing. Right. Tell me about the blessing part, because so, we hear a lot about the hard. It's hard, you know. It, yeah, we're fighting. Yeah. We're surviving. But there has to be some kind of silver line. Well, well I'll tell you, it, like one of the recent silver linings is she just happened to be walking into one of our local department stores. They happened to have some appliances that were 70% off. We got $8,000 worth of appliances for 1300 Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. One of the other larger of our blessings is that we have 10 grandkids. And when we were first married, we only had uh, four. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean about, you know, yeah. one, you have to look at how life brings those blessings to you. Right. And it's that day that you walk up and this thing is sitting here and it's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's what I mean about having your eyes open to the fact that there are many types of blessings. Right. The big and the you know, small. Big and the small. Yeah. The appliance and the grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because they're wonderful. You know, yeah. I got a seven-year-old. She thinks she knows everything. Right. And I'll ask her a question, and she's well, I can answer anything. Well, tell me what is, you know, how many pennies are in $5? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay, but um, they are a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, life has been a blessing. And understanding that there are different journeys for everyone. Right. Is probably the other portion of this. You have to understand that there are going to be those that if you don't have the positive support, it makes it even that much harder. Mm -hmm. So whether it comes from your child, whether it comes from your, your significant other or a family member, um, you need to have that support. Mm -hmm. And I, my wife has told me that if it wasn't for my support, that things could have been different. And I say the reverse for her. Mm. Because in my giving her support, she actually helped me work through it, too. I love that. Because like I said, my, my first was I was hot. I was mad. I was like, this is unbelievable. I've never been down this road. Now that we've gone through it, and we continue, um, I've learned to take those things and put them in their place. Right, right. And as a part of the overall blessing... The first one, again, is always, I woke up. Right. The second one gets into how things are just happening and how things fall into place in life. And the people that they bring you to, because that's the other part of it. Who do you actually run into? What is their influence? It's, a, it's an open road. Wow. Yeah. This has been incredibly impactful. Okay. Tell me how people can find your support group and how they can join you and have these discussions in person. Okay. Tell the, the audience how So to we're on Facebook. Out. I am the director for Real Men Wear Pink and Black. We have a Facebook page. It's Supporting Our Sisters International is the main page. Uh, but we also have a uh, Real Men Wear Pink and Black. The idea of the men's group is to, again, teach, teach men how to be better supporters and how to handle these situations. Um, if you come to us, we will, we, we're able to put you with someone if you want to get the medical answer for something. But if you just want to talk, we're open to that at any point, any time. Um, and at this point, you can just leave your message on the page and we can get in touch with you and, and talk with you about whatever that situation may be. Wonderful. And you yeah. have a partnership with Doctors Community Hospital yes. somehow? Yeah. Okay. So what happened is is um, there was a time we were going to three different groups. <laughs> and my wife, um, we continued to go to doctors because then I was able to go upstairs and be a part of the men's group. And at first, I was just the, uh, a person going. But over time, 
And because the number of men is limited, I was able to um, start into co-hosting with him. Okay. And so we would get into our conversations. Plus, now it's been nine years. Wow. Okay. And so when you walk in with nine years of story, then they're like, oh, well, I'm really going to listen to you because you've been through this. Yeah. So you're now um, a So they know. Yeah. Thank Fabulous. You. Well, yeah. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're most welcome. Yes. For being here. Once again, this is Mr. For ben me. Smith, yes. um, who is a wonderful supporter of a fabulous caregiver and a fabulous caregiver. And we just thank you so much for your time. Yes. We'll catch you on the next episode of Behind the Pink Wall.